descriptions to everybody. So it's thank you, Jessica. Time. Totally course, appreciate yeah. that because it does take up a lot of bandwidth. I like oh, to keep yeah. them for a little while because sometimes I like to put um, sometimes I like to put stuff up uh, on Instagram, um, but it does like constantly clutter up my. Well, they'll um, stay in the WhatsApp thread. If you ever need to go back and get them, they're they're still there, but they won't be on your personal them? camera roll. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Right. Well, that would be yes. nice not to have everything in the camera roll. Okay. Yeah. So, there we go. Okay. So, <laughs> look, I even broke this ruler trying to get that safety. This is a safety thing that was supposed to go on the tablet but it didn't fit into the holder and then trying to get it out was crazy give me one second i'm gonna go get another ruler okay so as usual for those who are doing this as a pencil drawing or some other thing and they want a grid, um, you can do what I'm doing right now to your source. Well, you can do a couple of things. I guess, let me demonstrate. If you're working with pencil and paper, just regular paper, you can just fold your paper. One, Sorry, that's oil paint. I should probably actually wash my hands before I get into the <laughs> drawing. It looks Two. like blood, especially now after you've been talking about brains exploding. I'm starting Three. to worry about you, Leah. Oh, do you guys want to hear a story about that? So I have something about the size I have a of a story monocle, about that. Right? Yeah. So it um, like I this when I open it up. I have uh, 16 equal squares, uh, sorry, rectangles. If I want to, here, I'll bring this a little closer. If I want to draw this grid, well, here we are. I'll take my ruler and find the halfway point around each edge. This is eight and a half, so the halfway point is Oh, sorry, 4.25, that's here. And then I'll find the halfway point up here. This is 11, it's five and a half, it's the halfway point. So lining up my ruler correctly and getting this in, I can grid my bird. Wrong one on the bottom. That's like folds one and two. Um, here, hold on, sorry. There we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna find the halfway point of each halfway. In this case, let's see. Point two. Oh, wait a minute. Oops, sorry, I do that to the wrong place. Oh, there we go. That's correct. I had the two lines in here. I marked them wrong, and then I wasn't paying attention. That's the kind of stuff that messes up your measuring. In this particular case, do what I said and not what I do. <laughs> Be careful. I'm finding the half point, halfway point of each half. So that I can continue drawing those lines. This is kind of one of our ways of getting into, let's see, so 5.5, so it'll be two point now. Five, that's two point. Is that point? No. 
Oh, the other thing is I can't read. Let's see. I'm going to, instead of measuring, I've got an eyeball here. Two, yep, there we go. One, two, three. One, two, And I will happily send this across um, as we start to do the drawing. But just as a reminder, at the beginning, as usual, we're going to start with um, the outside shapes. You're going to draw these in pencil, regardless of what medium you're going into. We're going to start with a pencil drawing. So notice this little birdie is kind of indistinguished. He's running into. the berries. So I just include this all together. This other stuff that's not sort of around the bird, it probably won't. But these, so these are going to be your first sketches. And then notice I'm kind of continuing these down here, even though I can't see them, I can kind of tell where they're going. That's one. Two. Notice in this sort of white area of the bird how much variation we've got in value. It's one of the reasons I picked this particular subject because I thought that was very distinct. Also, in a lot of cases, it's hard to see the chickadee's eye, but in this case, we can totally see it. I love the way the little berries here kind of look like little half moons. They're really cute, just sort of floating. All right, that should be enough. Maybe some stripes here. So I will, and then if you're using a grid, you're gonna go over here. You're gonna do that measuring thing that I just did here. If you're not, which is what I'm gonna do. You know, I know you guys can get started on this. I gotta wash my hands because I will totally get um, oil paint all over this watercolor paper and that won't be good. So give me just a second. And we have a, a story we're waiting for. Yeah, I thought Leah was going to go wash her hands. So I was going to yeah. tell it. <laughs> and then she didn't. Um, so I was priming panels and toning them. And I tone with um, burnt sienna, which is, um, where the heck is my burnt sienna? I'll show you. It's, it's well, you guys know burnt sienna. Yes. It's we like, know. it's iron oxide. It's blood color, right? So I had the panels on the ledge of my bathtub to dry because I needed somewhere for them to dry. And then I removed them. And apparently I got some paint on the bathtub and my daughter was no. <laughs> little at the time and she got so scared. She's like, mommy, there's blood all over the bathroom. <laughs> oh, my oh my gosh what and I'm like then I went and she she showed me where it was but it was actually um burnt sienna paint on everything <laughs> so that's how I scared my poor child yeah, has she recovered yes <laughs> I think so maybe that's so why she doesn't point... paint I'm not gonna make you guys use a grid. I'm happy if you don't want to, but I totally understand if you want to. What I do notice is that people who go off it too early tend to be off in their drawing, which gets frustrating for them. So if that's something that's gonna bother you, I would say definitely feel free. Use the grid. We're recording, right? Yes. Yeah. 
I'm going to ha have to leave you guys early today. We had a nice visit with Sandra Mahler this morning. She's in the DC office. I don't know who of you knows, but she's been diagnosed with a very virulent form of breast cancer. So Whoa. she's right in the middle of chemo right now, but she still came to class. And it was really great to have her there. If you know her, send her a little note. She's Leah, are you able to hear us? Because she's so, you know, wiped out by the treatment. I don't, I don't think she, Leah can hear us. But she's still. Probably not. Yeah, I think not. She still can't <laughs> seem to enjoy being in class. She made me very happy. It's good to see her. Yeah. Should we tell Leah she can't hear us? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll send it. Okay. She's not going to check, though, is the thing. She doesn't check WhatsApp. That's she's the red lines. Oh, wait. I guess I should have this. This is so yeah. funny. <laughs> it's really quite comical. <laughs> she doesn't miss us. <laughs> No, well, <laughs> I'm sure she still loves us. We're her favorites, remember? <laughs> How's that, Jean? Can you hear me? Is this good? I'm going to try a Facebook Messenger message. Maybe she'll. Okay. Do you think she'll look at the Zoom chat? Does it give her a notification? Maybe. So once she I've got my outer why shapes, I was so quiet. <laughs> then I can go in and sketch in my inner shapes. And as usual, I promise you, I have not done this lesson before. I've never done this subject before. Definitely not watercolor. Definitely not this subject. So. I'm gonna try calling her. Who knows what we're I'm doing? Yeah. Okay. Um. So funny. We're gonna stay away from the eye as long as we possibly can, because there's lights in there. It is funny. That we want to make sure we don't lose. Hi, you reached me a colander. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe she'll be able to hear the message when I read her a message. <laughs> I don't know what it is about chickadees in the winter. <laughs> is it just because they're around everywhere? Do you love them so much? Hi, you reached Leah Kohlenberg at the Roaming Studio. I'm not available to get your call right now. Am I not hearing anything? Oh, there we go. Figuring it out. <laughs> I was totally not hearing you. Were you guys not hearing we me? Know. Or could you hear me? Yeah, we can no, we could hear you. Call you. We've had a whole conversation. We tried sending you messages. messages, right? This is the problem. When I'm in my art zone, it's very hard to reach me. You're like asking us questions, and we're answering you, and you're like, and you're. <laughs> And I'm acting like nobody's answering. That's fucking hilarious. I'm like, what's going on here? Oh my god. We dumb. were wondering why you didn't wash your hands sooner. You missed my story about burnt sienna and freaking my kid out thinking it was blood in the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> that's a good story. You're right. I, totally I know. Missed that. Um, I was just working on a I, I have a commission I'm trying to get done and I I just kind of work up to the time and wasn't thinking so much. Sorry guys. Well, anyway, I did finally notice you weren't answering me back. I was like, why is everybody being so quiet? This is unusual for this group. We were wondering why you were not wondering why we weren't talking. Right, I was wondering <laughs> and yet somehow, all right. So this is a pretty good, uh, let's see. There's a little, it's kind of a little bit grayer here. Yeah. yeah, a little tweety guy, and then I'll add my, okay, let's see, there's a little dark thing for his leg here. Sorry about that. My 
It gets harder and harder for me as I do these to be able to sort of track different things going on. <laughs> it's just hard. It's funny. Uh, it's a different brain. All right. So if you want, you can send um, your pictures over to me, but I feel like you guys are pretty big. Oh yeah, here you go. You can't hear us. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Oh, I see it, I see it. It's all here. I can see it now, sorry. I was trying to make it ding enough that you might actually look at it. <laughs> it's cause I've got these headphones in cause they're better for recording. And uh, somehow the headphones just got turned all the way down. My hearing did. Funny mm -hmm. that you guys could still hear me. So, oh yeah, I totally we missed thought everything. They were just, just rude and didn't want to hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, you're giving up my secrets. <laughs> we thought we weren't your favorites anymore. Oh no, you'll always be my favorites. Now, come on. <laughs> I am going to leave for a second and go get some water. Hang on. Water. Okay. Hard to see the details. See, we can see a little bit more with this tablet. There we go. Nice. Um, I'm going to send over before I'm going to clean up my palette first so I can mix things as I need to. And let me take a picture of this. I'll send over the black and white. Just so you can see that. I'm trying to use the paint I used this morning and it's some of it is so dried out. <laughs> yes, that is a problem with um, um yeah, with with acrylic. <laughs> you cannot hear us at all. I see it now, I get it. I'm I'm catching up. All right, so you guys have that, which means this little Tweety Pie. Look at him, little boo. And uh, you have a picture of this. I will take another one just to put it up here so that you've got it up close uh, so that you can look at now. Go the other way. So you can look at the colors. Of course, you know you're not, you don't need to deal, you're not stuck with the colors. His foot's upside down, his right foot. <laughs> it looks like it's upside down. It's grabbing from underneath the twig. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, that's right. Look at that. There's one upside. Down. Really, all we can see of that is that little claw. That's adorable. He's just adorable, isn't he? Uh -huh. Okay. And let's see. Anybody have guesses on what we might include in our palette for this one? You don't have to, but if you have ideas. What are you imagining? What are the colors we're going to need? The base colors would be 
uh, red, blue, uh, uh, yellow okra. Mm -hmm. Yep, nice. Absolutely. I'm looking to see what I need to replace. I always like to throw in some burnt umber to start those browns going um, and the darks going. I'll turn the green blue. Ultramarine blue here. Some ultramarine blue. Some. I've got plenty of burnt umber. I need a little bit more burnt sienna. Funny, after spending a hundred days doing this, I thought I would do a lot more painting, but no. <laughs> like watercolor painting. It's pretty much just with you guys. Not that I don't like it. Every once in a while I'll do like um uh I'll do a uh a, a study with it or something, but most of the time I'm like, yep, no. I'm gonna give myself a little orange just in case. Have some here. Burnt sienna, burnt umber. Yellow. Uh -huh. Yeah. That should be all right. Now let me know when you're ready to start on the mixing for this. I'm so not in a rush, so don't. Oh. Um, I have you. I thought I put you on there, Lana, but let me do it. I'll do it again. I have you there, Lana. You're there. Let me resend it. There we go. Okay. Do you see it now? Well, it's, I have you on this group. I see your name here. I keep trying to add you and it says you're already added, Lana. So something's going on. Like it means I probably can't get it to you. Here, hold on. Is that black clump his other foot? Which black clump? Like, you see where his upside down foot is that we were talking about? Like no. That's the nope. Just that's a dried just up twig. that's just a dried up twig. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna be laughing about that for a long time. What are you using for the darkest darks? I'll probably use uh, burnt umber and uh, and ultramarine blue. That's what I would have guessed. Okay. Uh -huh. yep. I, I knew it. You guys are trained well. <laughs> Do you want me to start on that part? No? Sure. Okay. So as usual, starting with the darkest area and probably I might start with a smaller brush. Because I'm going to be working around the eye and I'm going to leave the eye blank as long as possible. There's some lights and I want the, I want to have a little bit of leeway before I deal with the bigger dark areas. So I'm taking a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt umber. There we go. Oh, you know what? I can't do lights. I'm going to have to use this bigger brush. It's going to drive me crazy to use the smaller brush. You have, you can use a smaller brush if you want to. So 
So I've got a kind of dark and just to test, there it is. That's a nice kind of bluish brown, sort of warm, but bluish dark. And of course, I'm gonna totally have to do another layer of this, at least one, if not more, because it's drying so fast. But let's get it in here. So it's the bottom of the beak. I'm working around the eye right now. Um, so and I'm gonna- super Awesome tonight, Leah. What's that? Set up is super awesome. Isn't it? It's like uh, the difference, you were right. I mean, like I was like, it's not, it, we needed a bigger screen. I think that was you, Janet, who was like, uh, it's hard to get to see everything. So yeah. yeah, we just needed something with a slightly bigger camera. Hey, we'll figure this out. <laughs> I'm going in to the darkest areas everywhere. Oops, that's a little bit too blue. So I'm pulling in some more. I'm actually gonna scrub this out a little bit. It was a little too blue. I, it's easy for these um, colors that you mix to get a little bit um, too much tinted, one color or the other, too brown, too blue, too red, too yellow, too green. Uh, and notice I'm only, by the way, doing the darkest areas. I'm avoiding even the medium dark areas right now. I'm really just focusing on darks. And that, of course, includes the twig. Be careful here, you want to kind of go in and around birdie claws. <laughs> you might want it to look a little bit because they're gray, birdie claws. You could add a little bit of burnt sienna to this mix as well if you wanted, because the, the twigs are a little bit redder. If you look really close, you can see it. This one is much browner. So when I go in to do this one, I'm going to do, I'm going to try straight brown and see what happens. Let's see. Yep. Yes. So you could do straight burnt umber here. This is slightly lighter, redder. A couple places here. We've got kind of red. Twiggy areas, not the red of the berries, but not just that red. So you're going to start with this. That's our starting point. So go ahead and uh, text me something. If you get to that point, you want me to go. I'll wait a minute. I'll wait a little bit. And my husband was super excited the other day when <laughs> the delivery came. I was the, not expecting that many. When the what came? The delivery came. The prize I, delivery. Yes. We wanted to keep you busy, young lady. You've got paintings to make. I'm finding a place to put that great big one. Yeah, the 30 by 40. Yes. <laughs> I, I actually told Jean when I ordered that, when I asked her to order it, I'm like, this one's going to freak Janet out, but I was pretty <laughs> freaked out. I'm going to make her do it anyway. Hi, Reg. Hi. We're hey. just doing sweet little birdies right now today. It's that kind I of know. day. 
I'm just stuck on human faces. Do it. You got to do what you got to do. I am going to stick it's you on. Bird -like. That's true. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is true. Excellent. Reg, you missed the fun part of class where Leah couldn't hear us and we were having <laughs> great conversations. <laughs> they were totally oh, talking really? about me. Yep. Yeah. They, everybody tried to call, oh. they tried to text. I was just demoing. I'm like, <laughs> Boy, they're so quiet today. Oh, I turned my mic down on my, my headphones. I can't hear them at all. I should have been there. It was yeah, you funny. would have had fun. <laughs> it was pretty funny. So you guys tell me when you're ready to go to the next step, when somebody's ready to go to the next step. I mean, obviously, we're going to have to go back in here and darken these, right, now that they've lightened. Although, if you'll notice, like, if you look up close here, this part of the birdie's head, although it's dark, is not quite as dark as what's happening down here. So we can start to make variations, I think. The tricky part about doing the chickadee is always trying to get that eye to pop out of the dark um, feathers that surround it. That is the tricky part. It's even hard to see the eye on the picture. Most of it. Well, if you look at it up close, you can see it. Yeah. I, you can actually see it pretty well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was, that's why I picked this one because these other two, you can't really see the eye at all except for that little reflected part here. I'll show you. We could have done this one, right? Very nice, like background, mm. but, and he's got a hilarious expression, but just not. And this one too, we just couldn't see the eye delineated enough. So we are here. Oh, also Diana, can I announce this Diana since you've decided you're doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. Diana has decided to do a weekly beyond our painting classes. Diana has decided to host a weekly a painting session on her Zoom. So uh, anyone who wants to join in can just come in and paint. No instruction. Oh, cool. Yeah. When is Some, it? Um, I think Friday mornings at uh, 8 a.m. LA time and 11 a.m. your time. So if you want to pop in for like a lunch painting session, we wanted to give India the chance to join in. And if we go any later than 8 a.m., we miss them. Um, but I hope you guys will join. I'll send it out with the next week's set of instructions. Yeah, and I, I'll set up a, a, a fixed link for it. Yeah, so. and she'll send, and I, and yes, and we'll have a, a link that you can join. I'll try to join when I can. Can um, you make sure I get it? Because I'm... Like, yep, but you notice yeah. I put you on the list, right? You got I the email did. last week. You'll start getting I it. Did. I put okay. I put Lana on the list. I am now putting Lana's home email address on the list. I've got all of you. I have you all in my clutches. Don't worry. I am not going to let any <laughs> of you try to slip away. You might try it. I am with you for at least another year. And oh my God, we are going to do so much art. What's the take up been like on the new SCAD, Leah? Oh, uh, good, good. Although this class is kind of quiet, but um, uh, we're getting new people all the time in LA and in uh, the Europe, India. That's block. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very excited. We were um, like 12 or 15 people this morning, I think. Yeah, yeah. We had like 15 people this morning. Um, we're having LA, which was kind of routinely like two to three sometimes four, is now like six or seven. Um, so we're, ex we're happy. And I think right. once uh, we, and like I said, I mean, it means that there's room to, to invite other companies in to join us, which is really nice. 
Yeah. Did you yeah, get no, anything that, from from BuzzFeed? Oh yeah, they are going. We are have we have two classes scheduled next week. Great. And if they like it, they're in. Thank you so much, Raj. That was a okay, that's okay. And and open society. Yep, they're also going to do some classes. I don't know if you know this, but um, Susan and I actually I actually worked for Susan. Like I forgot about this. Sue Valentine, but, you worked yes. for Sue Valentine. Sue Valentine, yes, I worked for uh, Open Society Institute. Maybe I didn't work for her because she might not have been there at that position when I was working for Soros. I worked for the Soros uh, organization in Mongolia. I did oh. a year training journalist in Mongolia. It turns out she and I both worked with a, when she was in South Africa, I was trying to, trying to figure out who I was more impressed by, her or the guy she worked with, Bill Seemering, who's one of the founders of NPR. They did, they did some tremendous work together in uh, South Africa after apartheid was over. Doing yeah, you know, no, journalism no, no. She's training. got a long story, successful. Did you know Martin Hala? No. In... Okay. No, that was, but anyway, she was like, and then, so we figured out we knew a bunch of people together. Uh, that was really great. So they're going to do something. I don't know if they're going to join the group. I think BuzzFeed is really hot to join. We'll see how the classes go next week, but if there's attendance, I think people are really excited to join and they'd be a great, great they'd be a great um, addition to our group. I yeah. Think. So, and since there's a lot of New York people that will give us more of a New York audience. Yeah, thank you so much for that. That is, no, no, that no, was no. really, really wonderful. Really happy, great. And they're really excited. They're like so excited. Everybody's all stressed out, you know? <laughs> like, the, like the, this year has just uh, stressed out journalists too much. Yep. Janet, did, did you ever think about maybe putting something on a listserv in, in IRE? I never did. I should do it. We should um, do it now. I'm and, not and on what, the list much anymore, so I don't even I know. know what I could post. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. And one of Janet's friends at CNN is interested too, but it's been harder to pin her down. So. Remember, Melanie, remember Melanie Hicken, Reg? She was the oh. intern that you hooked me up with. Let's see. Um, when I first came to Reuters. Okay. No, I don't actually, but. Worked for us one good. summer. She That's was from that NYU program. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, I remember. I do remember her. And she saw the art show post on Facebook. And got very excited. Oh, I want to get CNN to do this. Cool. But you know, yeah, so I need to like chase her up, but. What I realized after BuzzFeed gave very real interest is that I really had to uh, up my registration game and make my make the portal a little bit easier to use. So I, I did that. I have been doing that. I think now we're ready to take in a couple more people as they come through. Um, all right. Great. I, I am going to thank, but thank you so much, Reg. That was really, really great. So helpful. Um, all right. So we are going to go on to uh, the sort of mid-tones of this piece. So I'm very interested in this area down here, which we know would be white, right? This would be white if uh, it wasn't in shadow. And there's little bits of white here. And I see a kind of blue yeah. in that shadow. So I am gonna actually suggest that we do, we try a watered down version of ultramarine blue and burnt umber. So less, so, and a little bit more on the blue side, not super blue. We don't want it to be, so we want it to be gray really. And then more water. So I don't know if you can see this, but now I'm gonna come down here and it's okay if I go a little bit lighter, right? As always with watercolor, we're layering in and I'm gonna preserve this area in here in here as white. I'm not going to put anything there. I can already tell I'm going to need to go darker, but as I go darker here, I'm totally going to have to go darker here too. So this is one of the things that happens. And so everything kind of under here is this grayish Oh yeah, I see it. Yeah, his yeah, it is a weird way. It is a strange way to hold his little feet. 
isn't it? Yep. It is very strange. It's cute as hell, too. Very cute. Okay. So there's here, there's some grays here. Where else is it? There's gray kind of here. There's a lot, and then there is this kind of very light grayish color, grayish brown here. So I'm going back in and adding a little bit more burnt amber, but really going lightly here. There is a slight, it isn't as white as it is up here in this area, which we're just gonna leave white. So, so notice whenever I have a color, I kind of instantly look to see where can I put it elsewhere. So I'm always moving around the, I'm moving around the, the subject. I'm not getting too caught up in one area. Getting caught up in one area, I mean, there are times to spend a lot of time in one area, but at the beginning, you want to lay these darker patches of color down first so that you can kind of see what other details you need, the bigger colors. And actually, it's bothering me enough that the darks aren't dark enough on the top that I'm actually mixing burnt umber and ultramarine blue and going back in and adding another layer of dark here. I'm going to even have to go with the third layer. I can see it. And where the dark kind of meets a light area, I'm kind of tapping with my brush like this. I'm doing this little tapping thing. up here too, where these edges are. Because there's a little bit of a, I want a little bit of a ragged edge here. So can you see how I'm using this? I'm using actually the side, the angle. Let's see if I can get right in here so you can see what I'm doing. I'll work down here. So see, I'm actually working with my angle brush. I've got some and I'm, I'm extending I'm not getting too uh, methodical about it because uh, I'll get it, I'll create like, I don't want to get too crazy with the patterns, but I do want to work that edge. And then here as well, I need to go back in. Let's see, where else is it dark? It's pretty dark here and it's super dark under the wing. So see how I'm coming back in here and adding my darks in, layering my darks in darker. And a lot of times with this particular brush, I'm using the side. I'll scoot it back up when you need to see other things. And then there's this kind of um, brownie, excuse me, there's this brownie kind of um, soft brown which I really interpret as um, burnt sienna. Sorry, that's super dark. Burnt sienna with just a touch of blue, not enough to really wreck the brown, but enough to kind of mute the brown a little bit. So just a touch of blue, that means I'm taking a teeny touch, just like that much and mixing it in. Yeah, and then I'm going to water my brush down a little bit. And here we go. And I'm kind of brushing in and over the gray. And I'm leaving, there's a little area here that's sort of light. So I'm leaving that. Yeah, and in fact, I'm going to even water this down even more. Oh, cool guy. It's a cute little bugger. He is a cute little guy. Yeah, he totally is. I agree. And because I put on something that wasn't quite dry, I lost my kind of value differentiation here. So I'm just, this may, I may have to wait for that to dry before I can really work that edge. And then I'm going to even more lightly with more water come in here. It's 
really easy to, easy to overdo this. Okay. And then I, I feel like we should get the berries. Oh, sorry. Let me, you guys hold this back a little bit. I know it's looking pretty sloppy right now, but we all know that's what happens. That's part of the deal. He looks good, Leah. He looks the cute, but he looks a little good. sloppy. Yeah, the drawing is good. It, it looks a little sloppy in the paint application here. I'd like this to be less darker, but that's what happens. Um, but we all know that's part of that process, right? Anyway, thank you, Jessica. That was really sweet. If you feel oh, like it, good. you're very nice. That is very nice to say. I like it. I like it too. Um, I mean, who doesn't like it? Birds are great. <laughs> I might go back in and get some more with a pointed brush. I'm looking here with some burnt umber and burnt sienna and try to get a little bit more shape, some lines here into the wings because the structure of this area the structure of this mark making, I don't think I could get with my other brush. So I'm actually going in and adding in a couple with a very skinny brush. This is the first time I've you guys have seen me use that. this. I'm normally pretty big on using just one brush. And then of course I can automatically see, I need to get darker, dark, 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 darker in here. Not a lot of uh, lines, but just a little bit of striation. Just to kind of outline the texture of the feathers. And then if you if you're feeling if you've kind of moved ahead, we can add in some of these berries. The berries are red. Oh, but it's interesting. They're not they're not like cadmium red. Let's see if they're quinacridone. Quinacridone's a little bit. It seems to be a lot of yellow in them. There's red, yeah, but they're not straight. Um, okay, so they're not, yes, I agree. But a cadmium, a straight cadmium is gonna be a little too orange is what I'm seeing here. Yeah. So I'm mixing quinacridone red, which is that the cool red with cadmium red. And I want you to keep the areas that are white, the sort of tops of the berries light and the bottom of the berries you're going to see each berry has a little dark edge and so you're going to mix in a little bit of green to that red mix that you've already got to put in your green this may take a couple layers see that so it's like and i know this looks kind of dull it's not quite as dull as the computer screen makes it look right now um Back in. There we go. Wait, there we go. But I'm not doing. I'm doing acrylic. Oh yeah, way easier in acrylic. It's way easier. It's still, still muddy. It's muddy. Wow. So this is interesting, Diana. What is happening with your? Um. Uh, is something happening with your color mixing where you're feeling like mud is happening? Like what's, because that's unusual for you. Oh, it's not, it's not that, it's just the. Is it just the stage that it's at? I've just never heard you talk about it before. That's why I'm bringing it up. I'm like, what's going on there? I mean, muddy is normal for the beginning, unless it, you're feeling like you're getting more mud than usual, in which case we should 
try and figure out what's going on. No, 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 I don't think okay. it's more than usual. It's just just the normal muddle, muddy, muddy mud of the usual. So each of these berries has a kind of red that's pure, this kind of white on the top, and then this green edge on the, the sort of red green edge on the bottom. So you can go through and add all of the reds if you want to, the red parts, which is what I'm doing. Um, let's see. Here, here, there. Oh, and there's one here. Uh, and then you can go back and mix your reds with a touch of green to do your shadow. I'm sorry, what red did you use? I used both quinacridone and uh, cadmium red. I mixed them together. It's definitely an orangey red, but it's not as um, red as you think. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And there's definite shadows on each of these. So we definitely need a part of the each berry on the left, bottom left, that's kind of dark. I have this webinar coming up. I'm just going to take a picture and show you where I'm at. OK. You mean you have to leave us? Yeah. Okay. I, I, she mentioned that when you couldn't hear us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Diane, we really have to talk to you about this uh, this sort of devotion to work thing that you have going on. It's really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've got to we got to work on that. Well. Uh. I got to do it so I can afford <laughs> Yeah, so you can pay. I got it. I got it. I'm not going to. I'm just okay. kidding. And I, I got to go funny. make dinner. So I have no devotion to work here, but I do got to cook. So. Well, cooking is good. That's a form of art for sure. So you haven't Let's tasted see. my food yet. Okay. <laughs> um, see you all. Hi. See you later. Bye. Oh, Diana, that's looking great. Yep. Just coming along. He's coming along. You can see Diana was able, because she's working in acrylic, she could really do an entire red base, which I think is a very appropriate thing. And there's a kind of pretty greeny gray color, which I'm going to try and get in later once we get more details. So um, let me know when you guys are ready to go on. Yes, and I can also say that although this looks a little bit gray, it's not as gray. So I'll take a picture of it so that you have it. Kind of at this stage. It's not as gray as it looks. There we are. Yeah, that was great. Reg did totally hook me up with BuzzFeed and that's Open good. Society Institute. It was really very nice.
The real trick here is to get too dark too fast. So that is the thing you want to avoid. That's the challenge of watercolor is to build up your darks rather than jump right into them. That's hard, but it's worth trying. Yeah, actually, and by the way, next week, the LA Press Club is doing yeah. on Tuesday a webinar with Lisa Richwine on journalist mental health, right? Yes. <coughs> Which is free, and anybody should want to go, although you probably have a pretty good idea of journalist mental health. It's, uh, it's 5, 5 p.m. our time. So 8 p.m. your time. Yeah. experiment a little bit with this color that's kind of behind it. To me, I see it as a green, yellow, red mix. Red because it's a very muted green. So we know all greens, all landscape greens, But a very, uh, but yellow because it's a little bit lighter. I'm using viridian green, which is quite dark. You want to lighten that. Let's see. Bye bye. I'm leaving you now. Bye, Diana. Bye. Good luck. We'll see you later. Pop back on if you can. That's kind of interesting. So, yeah, I kind of like that color. So this looks kind of gray on the screen, but it's a very green tinted gray. And I think it's important because it's going to help pop your berries, uh, which have a light top and might have very little uh, paint on them. So it's viridian green, lemon yellow, and then red, cadmium red. And then a lot of water. See how it kind of reads as a gray when I lay it down? But I think that will really help pop the bird a bit. So I think it's important to get in there. Now, now that we've laid, once we've kind of laid down, and I'll take a picture of this so you can see that this is not as gray as it looks, it's greener. See how I'm kind of coming around the edge of the berry with this green. I've kind of left this area undone here. Now that's because there's some light areas here, but this is gonna get very dark. I think it's good to get the background in now. Also, sometimes you just go to the background because you don't want to deal with the detail. <laughs> You're like, how much can I get away with just making this a background thing? I don't have to spend so much time.
the background kind of starts to help you see, oh yeah, I gotta get darker up here in the top of the bird. So I can go back in with burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And dark end. That's nice. I can darken down here. Because my background was still wet. Top of my bird kind of bled into it. So be careful if things are dry before you start layering more stuff. Don't do what I just did. Oh yeah, it's pretty. I also noticed that my red looks a little bit dull. So I might go back in with some just basic bright red. I'm having that problem too. Yeah, that's just the first layer. So there's a couple of things you can do. Janet, are you using um, tube acrylics or, or watercolor or are yeah, you? I have, my choices are Windsor Red and Alizarin Crimson. Well, so Alizarin Crimson will be good for the darker parts. That's what I did, but now I'm trying to get those later parts and it's just coming out. So here's blue. my suggestion. Do you have a little orange? Can you mix a little orange in there or a little um, yellow into your? Well, I mean, all I have for orange is this like Windsor red. So I would say, is the Windsor red your sort of cadmiumy red? Yeah, yeah. So I would just say, so here's what I would suggest. Um, give yourself some wet. So let's see, I don't have that. So let me get some. You wanna give yourself some actual wet tube acrylic. Or sorry, watercolor. So this is this is dried. So but this stuff is wet. And I'm going to take a little brush and I'm going to put some of the basic tube paint on, and I'm going to paint that on without. So some of your Windsor, instead of watering it down, just go with straight tube. And if you want to, you can even mix it with a little yellow. So that's it. the orangey red you're using? Yeah, that's the orangey red that I'm using. Mm -hmm. And you see I'm adding it in little bits, but I'm still keeping some of the areas darker, more shadowy. Mm -hmm. I'm just scraping some of that on. I think that will help. Yeah, it's definitely brighter. Yeah. And if you don't water it down, it will read as brighter. So these right now here, once again, it's hard to see here because of the picture quality, but you'll see my reds read a little bit more bright. Sending this across again. You'll see this looks a little bit brighter. And then, and then we're gonna wanna go back in once again with a skinnier brush, more burnt umber and an ultramarine blue. Get darker here. So as you see now, I'm using a fairly skinny brush and not that big floppy one. So that I can kind of work in the top and I'm going around the eye. So the trick with the eye, and I'm also at this point not dipping my brush, um,
I'm not, uh, how do I say it? I'm not dipping my brush in water really. I'm just doing straight paint. So see, I can get a little bit of a darker, darker thing going here. Brown, if I notice it's too brown, I'll just pull in a little bit of blue here. <laughs> then the real challenge is that with the eye, there is this dark center that's really the darkest. Really might use phthalo blue. I might try phthalo blue to see if I can get a slightly darker blue. Phthalo blue and burnt umber. Yeah, so it's dark in the eye and then there's a circle of light around the edge of the entire eye. And then there's this also reflected edge in the middle that's light. So when you do the eye, so I think that works really well. If you've got a phthalo blue, mix that with your ultramarine blue uh, with, with your burnt umber to make a dark for the eye itself. And then kind of paint around, leave a little bit of a, an edge here and also leave a little tiny block in the center. Which is that um, reflected light on the bird. And then I'm going to go around with that all, uh, phthalo blue and burnt umber, which is a kind of darker, crisper. I'm going to go around the edges of where things are darkest. See how that's starting and I'm and I'm using less water and more paint, just straight paint mix. Ultramarine, uh, sorry, um, phthalo blue and burnt umber. So where the shadows are, which is like under the wings here. Yeah, so that all so that so that phthalo blue gives us a slightly darker, denser, and bluer black, kind of a cooler black. Yeah, I think that helps quite a lot. Better. I could in some places, I could take that ultramarine blue and burnt umber also and a little bit of red into my branch in some places, my tree branch. Oops. Not too much blue though, because that'll show up on your branch. Oh. Blue. If you want to, you can even paint in a little bit of that burnt umber, that sort of the phthalo blue um, burnt umber mix into some of your berry shadows at the very left bottom. So you can see I'm doing that here. And it's kind of helping. Like this one that's here is really fairly dark at the base. And we're going to deal with this part last. Oh, yep. See, I had a little bit of a drip here happening. Let's see if I can do something about that. Oops. <laughs> okay. Well, 
blend in. I'm blending in a little bit of red. I actually kind of like that. That was a total mistake, but it worked. I, I still had some leftover red on my brush, so I'm kind of blending it in over where my where I ended my green, kind of into my green. Oh crap, now where's that color? <laughs> there we go. It's funny, in pictures like this, you realize how very little vibrant color there is. Almost everything is neutral. Isn't that interesting? Almost all of it. Then let's see. The real trick here is to try and get this kind of light gray. Water. Okay. So here. So really, it's almost a question of darkening around where the claws are. Yeah. So doing the negative spaces in between the claws, where the claws would be. Oops. And now I'm, I'm trying to grab some light gray to kind of get those. It's not blue enough. There we go. This part of the claw is kind of very, the talon is very blue and dark. So I'm mixing battle blue here. Yeah, I think that'll work. You can also kind of fudge the, um, and kind of fudge the uh, claws a little bit. That's not really where people are gonna be looking. That's actually not too bad. Make sure your twig shows up as very dark against the bird's belly. That's a key. It's kind of a key, key intersection here. Yeah. Aw. 
Yeah, he is kind of cute. Look at you, little guy. All right, I'm going to send this to you guys at the state it's in. I think I may stop working unless anybody has a particular question as you're working through. I think we probably got about, yeah, half an hour left. Oh, okay, Grant, good. All right, let me take a look. I'm going to send you guys where this is right now. There's a point where your painting is going to need a little bit more firm lines. So I went in with a liner brush, a little brush, and with the dark edge, I kind of went in and traced out the breast here, the top here, so that uh, the lines are a little bit firmer. Let's see. Grant, something happened to your birdies, the top of your birdies head. He looks a little squashed. I think you need to, let me see if I can show you. I think you need to bring the head, let's see, I can do it up here. So your birdies head is going like this with the eye here. I think you need to go around a little bit more like that. It's kind of almost like square and then coming down like that. Aren't you just cute as the Dickens, little guy? Do you guys ever have that feeling of like, I, I'm amazed that I still have it, where I paint and like all of a sudden I'm like, wow, look at that. It looks like something, <laughs> right? Like yeah. I still have that kind of wonder, that sense of Me wonder too. that we can, that's good, that's it. In fact, it seems to get stronger. What do you say, Jessica? I'm like, oh, he was just a little bushy bunch of colored areas and now he looks like a little bird. Isn't that amazing? It's always like also kind of re a relief that it actually turned into something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Lana, your birdie looks a little bit, the shapes are not quite there yet. I want you to, in fact, why don't I do this right now? I'm going to turn this upside down. So for those of you who are kind of working your dark areas, I want you to look at your piece. Uh -oh. Does my painting actually want to do that? Um, here, let's go like this for right now. Um, so Lana, look at the shape of your head. Look at the shape under the chin. You don't quite have it right, the dark area shapes. So I want you to try looking at those. Also, I'd say your, um, your uh, dark is too blue. We need a little bit more brown in there. Mix more brown. And look at this shape, you'll see. Turn your piece upside down and I think you'll see the pieces. Oh, very nice, Jean. Lovely. Thank Adorable. You. 
Yeah, I think we can kind of simplify the legs a little bit. That's not really the subject of the the main subject of a of a piece like this. Jean, I might consider mm -hmm. um, drifting in some other colors into your background. Okay, like what? I don't know, like pinks and greens and yellows. I mean, gray them down a little bit. Don't make them super bright, but I think that like um, you could totally get a little bit more greenish gray going in here. Just for the fun of it. Uh -huh. Just because I have to say something. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like your background's a little bit too brown. I mean, unless you really like that, but I would say you have room to uh, to mix some more. I was more trying color. to go with an olive green, but I watered it way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd go a little, do another layer of green and try to really push that green. It looks really cute. I like your berries a lot too. Totally sweet. Yeah, I was pleased with how they came out. Clear that watercolor is hard. It really is. It really is. I'm and what you're, what we're I'm doing in these, um, these last two subjects is we're working with a lot of grays. So we're working with a lot of muted colors that are kind of mixed down to gray. So. That's a challenge. Look at the shapes. Look at this light shape, white shape, by the way, in between here. This is as important a shape as these two shapes here. But do you enjoy it, Janet? Do you like it? Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's the same that issue I had with ink, where it's like, until you got control of it, it and you certain. certainly mastered it. Oh my God, did you call if ink you your go bitch? If you with your values, then the whole thing, like nothing will work. Like there's no saving it. Right, right. If you go too dark too fast, basically, and you can't pull your darks. Yep, that's right. Well, and I'll tell I you. I that again on this. You certainly made ink your bitch. I would say by the end of 30 days of October, you I made was still ink. Was the same mistake at the end of the 30 days that I was making at the beginning, but I was I was more in control of it. I, I mean, I, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Imagine what you do with another 30 days. I mean, I guess that's my point. It's like you just keep, and it's okay. Maybe you need to try it and then sit with it for a while, and then we will return to watercolor in April. Right, so we'll do it as long as you guys want to. You get to choose. I mean, we're gonna do it through November and then you guys get to choose what we do in December. Um, it's totally up for grabs. But then in January, we're gonna start painting demos. So we're gonna start with acrylic and then going to oil. For those who wanna to, want to go to oil, you don't have to, you can stay with acrylic. Um, and then we're going to, and then we're gonna to go to watercolor again in April. 
So it's often like learning it and then revisiting it and then letting it go for a while, trying other things and then coming back to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the most incredible thing to me about uh, art is that you can actually, there's actually a value in leaving it alone. If you're like, I just cannot make this work. I had a portrait commission I did earlier this year, which I charged way too little money for two teenage girls. And uh, it just took me forever. It took me forever. And I had to leave that thing alone for weeks because I just couldn't get it right. Then finally I used another photograph because I just realized I couldn't get what I needed out of that particular photo. And then it was easier. And then still I had to move the eyes down, move the mouth around a hundred million times. And it just took a long time to get it right. I'm gonna move this. Let's see. I'm gonna move the computer over. Ah, oh, yes. He's running out of battery.
think I went a little too far with the color in the background. Let's see. Well, there's no such, no, I like it. I yeah. like it. I like it. Uh, I would get rid of that kind of ragged edge where the red beats the green on top of his, you know, above his head coming down okay. from the right because that's a little too strong. No, I think that's better. I Look what it does to your reds. Look what it does to your red berries. Yeah. I like that. Very nice. Excellent. I like it. So cute. And look what it does to the whites on your on your bird. Yep, nice. Good job. I love how you know exactly what I meant by that. Yep. <laughs> Scrub those out. Uh, how are you guys feeling about watercolor? Are you just feeling like it's super hard? Is I'm anybody really starting to, and to it, yeah, is anybody enjoying it? I'm enjoying it. I'm not getting the results I want, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever do the background first? Never. Well, I shouldn't say never. There's probably some situation which I would, but I can't think of what it is. There are people who have trained themselves to do that. I don't think it's very helpful. Uh, because to me, uh, the, the focus is the bird, right? The subject. So the background is always to help enhance the subject. But well, if you yeah, don't have I'm, any sketch of the subject, how do you know what, you know, what to do with it? Yeah. Like we just had Jean push her background darker and more colorful because we could see that we were losing the bird a little bit. Right. Yeah. So this helps do that. So you really, yeah. To me, that's kind of a, a I trained myself move, and um, I'm not gonna like say anything about it because you know some people use it to great effect, but I don't think it's a very good construction model. It's hard to keep the foreground from smearing. Yes. So sometimes you have to kind of wait and work around. It doesn't take too long to dry, but it takes just long enough. I also always like I lose like I lost the shape of the little crown because I went awry with my brush. Can you send that over? I will. I'm almost done with it. Got it. Thing. Got it. Okay. I had it right, but then when I put my black on, I slipped and now <laughs> it is, that is the wrong shape. <laughs> That's the problem. One little shake and boom. Yeah, and you can't fix it like you could with a regular, you know, with a, another medium. Right. But I really, I really am enjoying this, the subtleties, like the little dark gray, the, the actually it's a light gray in his throat, the, the white part of his, actually his cheek. Like where yes. there's a little... I like that little bit. I, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And, and you can't really get there until you've got all the bigger things laid down. And right, right. 
And then you go, it's just a tiny shadow, but it makes all of the difference in giving his face some character. Yep, exactly. my what the what's up word there for a second all right let's see janet he looks great i, I don't know show. he looks fine i see what you mean but i don't think that's troublesome and i love your background oh i think this is a fantastic uh sketch i mean i see what you mean but i think it does it's um it works oh lana much better i like your darks um I like your lights. Lana, go ahead and add work on your background. Um, good that you held on, that you pushed those darks more. So now go ahead and work on your background. I'll share this over so you guys can see it. That's wonderful, Janet. I love it. <laughs> and look at how differently you and Jean and I really handled our backgrounds uh, to benefit our to benefit our subject. Look at how different those decisions were about how, how nicely all three of them work. I don't love the color selection in this little set I bought. Um, did that you, means you get to buy more stuff. I know. Yeah. Did you get that set? Really cute though. I got that set, the- um, The one I recommended? The Windsor? Yeah. Windsor professional watercolor. Yeah, yeah, because it was so cheap and it had all a lot of the colors that I thought you needed. All these little tiny tubes. They're really yeah. cute. Yeah. But like I can you get Viridian Green in watercolor? Yeah, totally. You can get every color. In watercolor. I'm missing that. There's no so Viridian. get yeah, Viridian green, get some like there's no real cad, there's not really a I guess this is kind of a cad red, but not the kind I'm used to. Yeah, you need a good cad. You need a cad. <laughs> I need a good cab. A cab. I do too. <laughs> Stop. You just you actually made my mouth water when you said that. <laughs> It's a little earlier here, so <laughs> it's not quite five o'clock, but it's five o'clock where you guys are. Oh, it's way past that. Yep. Past five. Drinking is okay. I think in 2020, drinking at any point of the day is fine. I think that should be. That should be allowed. I want you to know I waited until two o'clock before I popped the champagne on Saturday. <laughs> Am I noble or what? Wasn't yes, that wonderful? Very noble. Wasn't that a oh, wonderful it moment? Was so cool. I just opened my window and hung out and just like screamed. Everybody and it was so much fun. Yep. Yep. I was in Central Park painting. It was oh, at the no. mall. Were people losing amazing. their minds? Oh my totally God. Lost it. It was amazing. Yes. And, and then at one point, I mean, my whole neighborhood, just people were just out and screaming and pounding. My whole town went crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And at one point, this one guy on a bicycle rides by and he's just doing this the whole way. He's just driving, riding down the street. I was on the phone when the news came through and like... <laughs> All these people started running out in the streets, screaming and banging pans. And I'm like, what are these crazy neighbors doing? Hang on. And it wasn't until I got off the call that I realized. <laughs> and, then, oh, and then you were out on the street with a pan. <laughs> right. You know, actually, it was really cute. I was um, teaching my kids art class. So it was early in the morning for me, like, I don't know, 830 or something. Like, it was early. And one of the kids' parents in Brussels said, um, Hannah, like to his daughter, and I, and we were, and she was like, what, dad? I'm in the middle of like art class. And he said, Trump lost. 
And she goes, oh, Triplos! And like everybody, <laughs> I screamed. We all screamed like really loud. Like it was really, you know, it's very fun screaming with children. Like yeah. they really get, they're like, yeah! They just have no holds barred. So how do you clean this thing after you've painted all over it? Clean what? This little... Um, Your palette? This thing. Oh yeah, your palette. You just wash it. You just run water over it, or you let it dry, or you take. A, did you see what I did at the beginning? Um, I can show you with my palette. I usually just take a little paper towel and wipe off the mixes that I've done uh -huh. um, in the area where you know you. I keep actually the same the paints always in the same places on the side, uh -huh. and then I clean out with a paper towel and wet water. The palette here. I'll show you. Um, like this. So, um, here, let's do this. Oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. I yeah. just dip my paper towel in the water and yeah and just clean it up off. sometimes i'll keep it on janet because i might want i might have a mix right just like that sometimes i might keep a little bit just in case i want a gray because usually a gray is helpful in watercolor but Oh yeah, you are stinking cute, little chickadee. <laughs> How is the little kitty? He's doing great. I mean, you know, he's adorable. Uh, he and Mooka still can't get along. Oh. He just cannot leave her alone. He attacks her every time he sees her. He cannot, he gets so excited and he goes with all four legs, all claws bearing. He, he jumps on her. He tries to kick her, he tries to bite her. <clears throat> he's just kind of an asshole that way. So <laughs> he's like a playmate. And she's like, yeah. and, and, and and he's kind of a dick, you know, like that's his sort of dickish side. I mean, but he's a very sweet cat. Like, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> but they still can't, we can't leave them unattended in a room together. Oh. We are hoping. Mm. And in fact, I sleep in the studio with him and Rob sleeps in the apartment with Muka right now. You can't. Oh, we just literally geez. cannot put them together, and I don't want to leave him by himself. So it's ridiculous. Um, but we are getting him uh, neutered uh, in a couple of weeks. So hopefully, some of that rambunctiousness will be snipped in the bud. Little shit, and it's amazing. He's totally adorable, and then he, and then we put her in the room with him, and he just loses it, his mind. I know another kitty like that. Oh, is that Axel? Axel's like that. Is Axel he's like that? Does, please don't tell me he's always like that. Oh, he's not always. He's getting better, I think. He's getting better. Yeah, they he's get better. They get older. They get a little bit more tired, but. But he is so that cute. That takes years, though. Yeah, it takes years. He's really cute, years. though. He's got a wonderful personality. He's really adorable. Um, we fall asleep each night. He puts his little paws around my face like this. And he falls, he falls asleep with his little paws on my face like this. It's the cutest. <laughs> hey, Leah, your idea last week yeah. was so awesome. Which idea? I have it all drawn out. The tanga idea for that drawing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The tanka. The tanka. So yes. I found one that I, I found one I liked, and so I kind of I used that as my model. I'm so glad. Do you and have it sketched like, in? Can you show I, us? I don't think you'd be able to see it. It's too okay. light. But but I'm putting like so many of them have flames. And I love that. So I like I'm having her now come out of the flames and she has flames shooting out of her head. 
That is, I figured that that. And then I put out. cloud, so like you, she's like in between. And this is Katie, right? This is yeah. one of Katie's poses. Yeah. So she's a little bit of white Tara in her, which is a very common um, Tonka imagery. Yeah, she's awesome. Wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, I love, I mean, I love the Tonkas. I love the idea of them and the history of them. Um, and I just, I love the idea of working on these drawings and marker as, um, as studies. Like studies. Yep. For your and oil paintings. Decide which ones I want to paint. And by this time next, and then you're really all of what you're doing is you're taking your work in the figure drawing sessions, which you love so much yeah. to the next level. It's yeah. easy to get stale in that situation where you just keep doing the same thing over well, you know if I mean? you just like, keep drawing the figure sitting on a chair it's kind of boring but right now it's like i'm drawing the figures and i'm imagining them in all these like, different years. positions and yeah. then and also you're working this kind of it's like a story cool flat geometric planey thing that you have going on with your figure yeah. so you can practice that um, yeah, with these fun. compositions. And I think that fits with the other, the earlier paintings that you've done. So yeah. there's almost a structural, like, um, like a building sense in each yeah. of, like each of your people is like a building with yeah. kind of squared off. Well, if you look at the first figure drawing I did that was successful, it was in um, Simon's pastel class. I have mm -hmm. it hanging in my dining room. I think I remember. That is what I was doing. Yep. Yeah, I think we had that. I remember having that conversation with you. And I think I yeah. remember that piece. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, that kind of stuff stays with you because you recognize it as a moment. It's cool. um, yeah, you know, and it's funny. Uh, you'll go, it's funny. Sometimes you'll you'll produce something that you that isn't like anything else you've done. And then and then it's only like five years later that you realize this is the direction your voice wants to go. Well, I was right. struck in your open studios, um, in your open studios exhibit, you had that, you had those pieces of that little house, like the abandoned, was it an abandoned house or something? Yes, yes. Black house. I remember you showing Michelle and I that last yeah, year. That's right. And to that's see where it's come since then yes. is really cool. Yes. Yes, and yes, that's true. And it's interesting in that series, which I launched, everything painted in 2020, except for one painting I did three years ago that didn't look like anything else I did at the time and totally looks like the work I'm doing now. Yeah. So I found this painting and I'm like, oh, and somebody said, you got it. What, isn't this one of the ones that you did? And I'm like, no, that's an old one. I did it three years ago. And someone said, yeah, it looks exactly so it's funny like these ideas will come out and we're not even ready to hear them right yeah. like we're not even ready to see them i knew at the time when i painted it that i liked it but then i just went yeah it doesn't look like anything else i do and i ignored it for a while but the voice wants what it wants you grow into it <laughs> you right? grow into it you grow into yeah. getting it yeah it's so fascinating Oh, God, we're almost at uh, eight o'clock. Okay. Everybody send in your last or we will, um, here, I'll remove the spotlight and we will, I will have you show up. Let's see. Grant, I'll have you, hold on. I'm going to spotlight you. Hold up your work. Where are you, Grant? You're not in the normal. Oh, that came up. That started to come out better. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you can get rid of that, some of that white. Use a, yes. Very nice. That, I like that. I like that. I feel like you, um, you're working hard with this watercolor and you have a lot of success this week. I know last week was frustrating. And I think you got, you pushed, a, you pushed through something this week in terms of brushwork. Can you feel that? Yeah, you're getting there. I ordered some new brushes. So cool. Um, okay, Miss Jessica, show us oh, what you've been working on. I can't show this week. I'm sorry. Oh, um, um, that's exciting. I'm doing a secret project with my friend, and it is I have to get ten paintings done by the end of the month, and I'm on 
number three, but none of them are done. <laughs> Excellent. All right. That's exciting. Yeah. All right, Janet, we will let you go to it. Hold it up. Are you wearing Melissa Moline earrings? That turned out really, really, really well. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's just bad for the first time I've really done watercolor. Not bad. And I think your ink work has really helped with that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Jean. I love yeah, that. Yeah, that turned out so well. That's like awesome. Very nice. Very nice. So, Jean, I'm just realizing one of the reasons we needed to darken your background was that your bird was lighter. So I yeah. think that was like a really helpful, that was like, why is it, what's going on there? And so, which is fine, but that's what the background is for, is to kind of push things forward, right? Do um, you guys my jellyfish? What? Show your jellyfish. Oh, that I love so that. That's awesome. That's is so that gorgeous. Is that watercolor too? Yeah. Yeah. She's been working in watercolor all week. She's been sending me stuff all week long. Actually, last two weeks, she's been doing a lot of watercolor. I've been, cool. I've been, I haven't consistently done it, but I've been trying to do, stay with the Inktober thing of doing one thing every day. Yeah, but you yeah. know what? You're going to start doing it consistently. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> We got this. And Lana, would you, oh, you can't show. Um, I'll send over, you guys, you can see Lana's, Lana's work. She's been, she came along well this time. I like where we got to here, hold on. Um, where's my WhatsApp? Okay, very nice. We have to get Mary Ann to come back. Yeah. She did, she came back this morning. Oh, she did? She did. She actually she made a mistake in the time, so she came in at the end of the time, but she was totally into it. Nope, she came back. She's back. Good. I don't we gotta get her to come back to this session, but yeah. Absolutely. And here's Lana's piece, which I think really came along. Can you guys see it in the WhatsApp thread? Not yet. I sent it. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. It came cool. along. It's coming along. Yeah, it sure did. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. nice. It's very nice. Um, all right, you guys. Thank you, As Leah, always. For yes, thank you for everything. Love you. Loves, 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 loves. All the way around. Loves you all. Hi. And we'll see you soon. And I'll send you info about extra painting sessions and all that. Yay. Okay.